Hi, uh, my name's Harry Smith. Welcome to my very small Philadelphia basement. Um, I'm uh, making this video because about a year ago, I made myself this backgammon set. I, uh, I decided I wanted a nice backgammon set. Um, and the ones I was looking at were all about a thousand dollars or even more. Um, and so I thought I can probably knock something pretty similar together for a lot less money. Uh, and this is what I came up with. Um, these checkers were very uh, kindly donated by uh, a friend, Josh Duckwitz, but otherwise uh, the total cost of this was probably, I guess, around 100, 150 bucks um, in materials. Uh, and um, there were a couple of issues that came up and problems that I solved. And uh, hopefully I can, uh, I can share some of those solutions so that if anybody else wants to have a go at something similar, uh, they don't make the same mistakes that I did. Um, so when I uh, when I got this uh, surface printed, um, I uh, this is actually a um, a printed or a, or a dyed dye sublimated felt surface. Um, there are a couple of options for tournament backgammon surfaces: uh, leather and felt, or some kind of uh, sort of uh, rubberized. Uh, neoprene finish. I looked at a lot of different things. Uh, wooden surfaces, inlaid wooden surfaces, while they're very beautiful, are, are very loud and not even allowed at some tournaments. Um, so uh, I went with a, a polyester felt that was uh, printed by a print-to-order company. Uh, the, I'll get the details below. The company I used is called Contrado. Um, and I designed the, the layout, the points in Photoshop and sent the file off to the company and they sent back the, the printed surfaces. I When it was the same price, there was a minimum order. And so when I got that surface printed, I'm just gonna pop this over here. I, um, I was also able to get a second surface uh, printed for the same price. Um, and this was the, I decided to use a different design for the second surface so, surface so I could have a look at, at the two different designs and see which one. I liked uh, the look of best, and I went with the green and black, um, but it means I've got this surface left over, um, and also, as chance would have it, my uh, my main backgammon buddy has a 40th birthday coming up in a couple of weeks' time, so I thought I would try and turn this surface uh, into a set for him. Um, the hardest thing to find uh, when you're making a backgammon set affordably is actually the checkers, which is really frustrating, because it really is just 30 plastic discs. Um, but it's astonishing how hard it is to find high quality, uh, high quality checkers. Um, the, I, I, I ordered some from Chris Lloyd, which were very high quality, but not, they weren't quite the quoted size. And I, since I already had this surface printed, I needed a specific size. If I was starting from scratch, you'd get the checkers first and then, and then order the surface to fit. So those Chris Lloyd checkers would have worked great in that situation, but they didn't work okay for this. So I returned them. Um, I, I looked at getting some custom uh, leather checkers made, but they were about 200 bucks. I love the Galaxy printed, the Galaxy checkers, the blue and white marbled Galaxy checkers are, would be ideal. They're beautiful, but they're also about 200 bucks for a set. Um, and I like my friend, but not enough to spend 200 bucks on a set of checkers for him. Uh, so in the end, I found, uh, I found these checkers from uh, Gammon Village. Um, which is, I thought, a good compromise. The marbling is quite nice. They're, they're finger dish checkers. Uh, they fit great on the and, the, and they go nicely with the points uh, on this design. Uh, and they were about, um, with shipping, about 50-ish for two sets. So I thought that was a reasonable amount to spend for this set. Um, I'll keep looking. Hopefully, I'll put them over here so you can see them. Uh, hopefully, s more people will start <laughs> making or importing uh, checkers so that we can get more affordable checker options because, frankly, it seems a bit ridiculous that, that 30 discs of plastic should cost a minimum of 60 bucks and, and anything up to 200 bucks, but that's because they're small run. Um, so maybe as backgammon grows in popularity, the checkers will get cheaper. Uh, so I've got checkers. Um, what else have I got? I've got, uh, I've got a Dublin cube. I happen to have a blue Dublin cube spare. 
Um, and I've got some Carol at Flint backgammon. Uh, I ordered from from her a uh, set of uh, nice set of precision dice, which came beautifully packaged. So uh, we have all of the accessories ready to go. I also have uh, I have a four or five board feet of um, maple. And I the, the previous set I used mahogany for, um, and it was because it was a dark color, kind of clubby colors. I thought that would work well. Since this is like light gray and black, I thought uh, a nice light colored wood would set that off nicely. So I thought I, I'm going to try it with the maple. Um, we'll see how that comes out. If it if it uh, isn't looking nice, I might boot out and do some. I've got some cherry up here. I might I might do it with that instead. But um, but let's make a start with the maple and uh, see how we get on. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to figure out some measurements. Um, the, 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 the trickiest thing in a way is, let me pop this back over here carefully. Um, one of the trickiest things is just getting it, uh, is getting everything accurate enough so that it, you know, plays nicely and you really want, you really want these, these, these checkers to fit really nicely and neatly along the back row like this. So, and it's sort of, you know, I don't have a CNC machine here, so it's really just a question of, of measuring accurately and maybe leaving yourself enough leeway because it's obviously, you know, still playable if there's a bit of play in that direction, but if they don't fit, you can't play with it at all. Um, so getting the measurements across here, uh, I'll take those measurements off the, off the, um, the new checkers and just double check that they fit on the, the surface that I've got. Um, and then I'll also um, figure out what I want, what would they want this to be. I might try a different uh, configuration. There's, there are two different configurations for how you, well, a couple of different configurations for how you arrange the, the checkers in the, in, the, the, in, the, in the tray at the side. Um, with this set, I, I went on with the, um, I like the, 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 I played on a Galaxy Earth board a year or so ago and it plays great. And one of the things that plays, makes it so good is that, is that it's so compact in this direction. Uh, and the only way you can achieve that is by putting the checkers sideways on like this. Um, if you go with the kind of more traditional lengthways arrangement, you ne necessarily have to make the board a bit deeper. But these checkers actually come, these actually checkers are actually a little thinner than I thought they were going to be. So I think I'm going to try and see if I can run the checkers in this direction. I'm only going to include, I included a spare two cubes in this set for a chouette, but um, I'll probably only use the one cube in this new set. Um, and I might, uh, uh, the dice cut, this size of dice cut worked really nicely with the 9 16 dice. I'll talk through that in a bit more detail, how I made that when I get to it. But I think if I orient that in this direction, which wouldn't fit in this set, uh, I think that will fit very nicely indeed. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, I, these, uh, these sauce hinges, which I love and I've used on other projects uh, in the past, are a huge pain in the butt to uh, install when you don't have, if you don't have a dedicated router set up or a CNC or something that's gonna cut out these, these mortises really, really accurately. Um, so I, uh, I am gonna ditch those for this. Uh, they look great, but, and they work great, but I'm gonna ditch those for this, uh, for the purpose of this. I found these really surprise, really nice hinges on Amazon. I'll see if I can put a link to where I got these from. Um, let me see if I can just hold that up. It's a kind of little extruded brass, um, brass hinge that's, that considering the price, I think it was about 12 bucks for three full sets. Uh, yeah, three, three pairs. Uh, it's kind of amazing. So I could, I might, they can, they could go like that. Um, or depending on how I'm, I might also put them on the, on the, on the backside, uh, as well to heart so they're more hidden and you just get the barrel of the hinge up here but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it um so first things first i'm gonna mill up some of this uh some of this maple um take some measurements off this mill up some of the maple check that i've got enough material and uh start making the box
Okay, I've got all my measurements. Um, I uh, I took measurements off the old set, um, but I also just measured up all my new uh, accessories to make sure everything was going to fit nice and neatly. And I checked that the checkers were going to fit vertically, which is how I want to arrange them in this set, uh, with enough space for some little dividers in between, and worked out how much material I need for the boxes. There are obviously two boxes, one for each side of the backgammon set, but I'm not going to make two separate boxes. I'm going to make one double height box and then I'm going to cut it in half down the middle um, so that uh, I can be sure that the two sides will mate up perfectly and also it saves a bit of work. Um, so I'm going to try and get uh, all of the, uh, the the main box sides out of this one board. I think that'll be, that'll be okay. Um, Okay, so I've got uh, I've got uh, plenty of nice clean material for the long sides here. Um, I've got a nasty little knot here, which I should be able, which I can't, uh, which I can't work around. So um, what I'll put, I, I'm gonna. I'll see if I can do it with this. Um, if I can, if I can arrange that so that it's slap bang in the middle of one of the sides and not on the edges. I might, it might be stable enough, um, or uh, I might just be able to fill it with um, a bit of epoxy or something. Um, and it might look cool. Uh... Okay, so I've, uh, I, I cut these roughly and then uh, ran them through the jointer and the planer and um, oh, the material's really nice actually. It's come up, there's some nice tight grain and actually this figure is kind of pretty and so is this and so is the knot. So I think we're gonna be able to work with that. Um, these are a, a little, these are about three quarter inch. I'm gonna take them down to about five eighths. Uh, but before I do, I'm gonna try and fill these little knots. Uh, the only epoxy I've got is like long cure, deep pour, and I don't have five days to wait for it to cure. So, I'm, and also I don't necessarily want to do like a, I wouldn't want to do a colored, a dark. I mean, black would look okay, but not, I, that's what I do in a, in a darker material. So I'm going to try have a go at just filling these with the uh, regular old super glue star bond um, and see how it comes out. Uh, let's have a go. I, uh, I taped up the back in case uh, you're worried this is all just gonna spill out all over my table saw. I'll, I'll let them soak into a couple of a couple of rounds of that and then let them set up and then run it back through the planer and see how it looks. Okay, uh, let's, um, I'm just going to talk you through the cuts I've just made um, before I go to the next step. So these are going to be 
all of my sides and uh, end pieces for uh, for the for the set. Um, what I've done is I've cut. It's actually going to be uh, by the time I'm finished, there'll be four separate pieces out of this. But um, I've cut it all out of one just to make sure they're all exactly the same length. Uh, and likewise, uh, the the backs. Um, I've uh, I've cut. 45 degree mitres on the ends. Um, these are the measurements uh, I had to take pretty carefully. This is going to be a uh, dado for the uh, for the cross pieces that divide the checker tray from the playing surface. So this measurement, um, I just cut these with the dado set on the table saw um, to fit the the same stock that I'm using here. Um, this is the piece I'm going to use for the cross piece. So I was just checking that that fat, that fitted nicely in there. Um, <clears throat> this this is the measurement to get really really accurate because this section here is going to be the width of the playing surface so that's going to be where my six checkers have to fit exactly across or as close to as possible fraction over um, and this is the width of either depending on which orientation I'm using but the orientation I'm planning to use that will be the height of my of my dice cups so now that I've done that I want to rip these uh, into uh, three and a half inch pieces. Uh, that's going to be the, the double height, which once it's all stuck together, I'm going to rip again into the two separate boxes. Um, and then unfortunately, after I've ripped the three and a half inch pieces, I'm going to have to put the dado stack back on the table saw because then I'm going to cut grooves, uh, rabbits in the bottom and the out in the top and bottom of the, of the set to take. Uh, a plywood piece which is going to form the back of the playing surface so that's a little bit annoying but I couldn't think of a way of uh, doing it as quickly and accurately without having to switch back and forth between the dado set so I'm going to make those cuts and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you me sticking it all together <laughs> Okay, this is the, uh, these are the finished pieces of the boxes. I haven't actually started gluing these together, but you can see that uh, you've got this, uh, this rabbit in here, which is going to take uh, plywood backing. Um, and uh, we've got the uh, dados here for the, um, for the divider, for the, for the checker tray. Um, the mitres look pretty accurate and tight. I'm gonna, can't decide whether I'm gonna put dominoes in these or not to try and hold them together. Um, last time I uh, did this, I tried to clamp it using uh, straight clamps, regular clamps, sort of there, 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 and then ones across the middle. Uh, it was a nightmare. I got a lot of racking and it was very hard to exert like a constant pressure. You could do this, I've done mitres like this by setting them upside down and putting tape across them and then folding them together. But I would need a long, accurate, flat surface to make sure that that was all perfectly lined up along a straight edge. Uh, and I haven't got a long enough surface for all of these folded out. So I borrowed uh, a band clamp like this um, and I've just done a little dry fit of that. And um, that looks like, I haven't tightened it down yet, but that looks like it's gonna, gonna work really nicely.
uh, quick check-in. So the uh, band clamps worked great. Uh, this came together really nicely. Um, I just I just rigged up a quick um, little like spline jig so that I could cut these quarter inch uh, splines in the edges. I don't. That's not necessary because of the the dominoes that I put in. Uh, we'll definitely keep it together, but I think they look cool with the contrasting wood. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use some of this walnut to to um, put the splines in in a minute. Um, but I'm at the kind of uh, one of the scary stages, so I wanted to check in on that. Uh, I'm gonna cut this in half, fully down the middle, uh, to create the two pieces. Um, so this is three and a half inches uh, across. My um, my, the kerf on my saw blade is an eighth of an inch, uh, so three and a half minus an eighth divided by two uh, is one and eleven sixteenths. So each piece, if I'm going to cut it exactly in half in one go, which would be nice, uh, is going to be each piece is going to be one and eleven sixteenths. Which by the time I've uh, like I've done a bit of trimming and planing and things, I think it's going to come down quite nicely to one and. Five eighths, um, which is roughly where I want to be at the end of the day. Um, so, um, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna set the saw to uh, to one and eleven sixteenths. I'll probably do a little test cut first on something, uh, and then I'm gonna run this through literally like this. Uh, when I did this before, I found that actually I was able to just about get uh, uh, this push stick. Uh, in place to keep it against the fence and actually that reminds me I'm also going to stick a feather board on here to keep it as pushed against the fence as possible um, it's still probably not going to perfectly line up by the time I come around all four sides so I'm going to have to just do a bit of hand planing to trim it off uh, but the next steps are going to be to run this all four sides to cut it in half and then uh, I'm going to then I'm going to glue in the, uh, the the vertical divider and the splines all at the same time so that I can let that dry up o overnight and that will be a slightly more efficient way of doing things. Um, great, let's go. Okay, so that's one and eleven sixteenths dialed in there. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to take the saw blade out and basically do a dry run. So, because I want this to be uh, pushing it right at the right at the front of the saw blade where it's making the cut. So. Sure, that I'm going to be able to run it all the way through without any hassles. That's pretty good. Okay, so I'll be doing one of these. Yep, that looks pretty nice. And actually, I can do this. I can just do a visual on here to check that I've got the right. Um, just I think I'm putting the blade up right on the back of the. I can just sort of mark with a pencil when it comes to and then take a measurement of that and just see if that's if that looks right so be good honestly as I said there's a bit of leeway in this so it's not uh, I could if I wanted to I could make two cuts I can I could I could cut it in half and then I can flip then I could take each piece I could trim it out slightly I could take each piece and run it through again to uh to get them exactly the same height but i managed to avoid that having to do that last time um by just getting it in half down the middle and then just hitting it with a hand planer and so let's i would like to try and avoid doing that again um so i think that's pretty good that's all locked down
just I just realised that that's going to bite in, which it's done. Uh, as soon as, because that's going to compress, the featherboard's compressing that, and as soon as that came, went past there, that sort of bit in. Uh, and so, which is annoying, because I just like, but I can, that's you're gonna, that's going to come out with a, with a, um, when, I, when I plane it. So, uh, just to avoid that happening on the final cut, um, I'm just going to uh, clamp these two pieces so that they're, um, I'll put a little spacer in and clamp clamp them so that instead of pushing them together, they sort of push apart. Okay, it looks like that worked great. I wish I'd done that on the previous cut. Um, because I w then I wouldn't have had this little gouge here, um, but it's tiny and I can, uh, I caught it before I ran it to the edge and it'll plane out very easily. So there we have uh, two, uh, two halves that will uh, now, with a bit of luck, perfectly align when they, uh, when they close up. Um, great. Okay, I'm not going to do any. I'm not going to plane off those ends now because I'm going to glue in the. Uh, I'm going to glue in the cross pieces and then uh, I can plane the whole thing down in one go. Um, okay, so I've got. Uh, I've milled up a piece that is going to be used for uh, for the cross pieces. Um, that's this piece here. Uh, so that should fit nicely in there. Um, and uh, nice friction fit in there, and uh, I just need to get the right height and then make sure it aligns with the bottom of the rabbit underneath. So the way I'm going to do that is the next step I'm going to is I'm going to actually put the uh, the back the back pieces in, um, and I'm going to put a little bit of greaseproof paper or butcher's paper underneath where the dado is. Um, but the, I'll make sure that there are screws just holding the the. the the, uh, the back pieces are held in with screws because I want to be able to take them on and put them off uh, because I need to put them on to fit all the pieces, then I need to take them off to and to finish it, and then I need to put them back on to like work out where the, the surface goes, and so I, I can't have them glued into place. Um, so I'll put screws in right around the dados to make sure that uh, there's, that, that, that sits flush and that this, this, these cross pieces can sit right down on them. And then I'll be able to glue in the cross pieces uh, glue in the uh, the splines uh, and uh, let it dry up overnight before coming back for the next step. Okay, I'm over at the drill press, uh, which uh, in my disorganization means I have to kneel on the floor, so that's definitely not safe. Um, I don't have a lathe, so to make the dice cups, 
Uh, what I did last time, what I'm going to do again, is use a hole saw to cut out three rounds from sort of inch thick material uh, and then glue them together. Uh, and then I'm going to use a uh, forstner bit to drill out the middle. Um, so that's a slightly guerrilla way of doing the same thing. Uh, and just use dowel through the middle to align them using the, the arbor on the hole saw to line up the holes in the middle. So it worked quite well. Uh, and I think it'll work well again. Um, what I was just doing uh, a minute ago was just working out what material I wanted to use for the dice cups and the trays. Um, it was all getting very blonde, although I like that. And I've got the walnut um, splines, so I'm going to do walnut for the dice tray, for the for the checker trays, and for the dice cups. And hopefully that will look nice. Um, so I just milled up a couple of pieces, uh, smallish pieces that I think I can get uh, enough out of material out of to make uh, two of these. So I'm going to have a go at that. One one of the things I did here, which was. Uh, which worked really well. The tricky one, tr tricky thing is getting this really nice and accurate is to get the the, the force and the bit drilling out right in the middle of the uh, of the of the circle. And uh, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to start. Um, let's point this down. I'm going to start with the force and the bit. I'm actually going to just on two of these circles. I'm going to do a little indent with the force and the bit. Um, and then I'm going to use the center hole from the force a bit to align my hole saw when I drill out those two pieces, and they'll be the top pieces of my two dice cups. And that means when I come back to the glued together version um, to try and uh, try and drill it out, I'll actually have already the, the force a bit circle indented, so I'll know exactly, in theory, uh, where I'm going to come to, to drill it out. So we'll see if that works okay. Um, actually didn't work last time because I, uh, I ended up having to uh, use a different size force a bit. So uh, I ended up having to just do it by eye, but I think uh, I'm going to try again this time and see if it works this time. Okay, wish me luck. Okay, so I've got uh, six rounds out of the uh, out of the hole saw. Um, my drill press keeps uh, slipping, and there's a nut right on the top that uh, constantly is tightening, and is also a pain in the ass to tighten. So if anybody knows uh, a fix for that, then please uh, let me know. Um, but uh, it does work. It works fine. You know, I got it's, you can be pretty efficient and get uh, I got all of those out of that board, um, and. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll glue those together. I'll line them up using the, 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 the hole in the middle and some dowels. Um, and then I can just, uh, I can sand them. If I, if I, if I, if I set a dowel uh, out at the end uh, then and glue it in place, then I can chuck that into the drill and, um, and I can use that to sand it um, and, uh, and get a pretty good finish. Um, obviously, this is all going to be much easier with a lathe. Um, but as you can see, there's no way to put a lathe. Um, so uh, let's have a go at that and glue this up, glue those up, and uh, that will be in the today. Okay, so I'm just going to take these dice cups out of their uh, out of their clamps and uh, have a look at those. And um, there we go. Uh, that's what we've got. Uh, we've got um, the three pieces nicely glued together, um, and uh, and a dowel sticking at the bottom, which I'm going to chuck into a drill bit and sand those off. Uh, I'll go and do that outside because it's going to make a mess. 
And then I'm also gonna cut the, uh, trim off the, um, the splines on the boxes and uh, plane down the top, hand plane down the top of the boxes just to get them all level, get these cross pieces flush, um, get rid of any of the burn marks, etc. Okay, let's go for that. Okay, I'm gonna uh, start work on these uh, checker trays now. So I've, uh, I did decide that I was gonna uh, do the, the, the side trays in Walmart just to go with the spines and uh, make sense of the fact that there's two different woods in this. Um, I've just uh, ripped down a piece of, uh, a couple of pieces of walnut to fit exactly inside the, the sidebar. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this massive cove bit, which is the same diameter as the checkers, to uh, run a uh, run a groove all the way down the middle, and then I'll be able to cut this into six-inch pieces, which each six-inch piece will hold fifteen checkers. So there'll be two six-inch pieces. Um, this uh, this was only about ten bucks. Um, and it's not very good, but I don't think I'd use it for a lot of projects. It just needs a lot of, it's not, it needs a lot of passes. Um, when I did it last time, I maybe took like 20 passes, at very, very small increments to get a nice smooth finish. So that's what I'm going to do now. Um, I'm, the only thing I've got to make sure is I'm going to make sure my router is dead center down the middle of this. So I'm just going to get that set up with a tiny little, uh, little uh, conical bit there, just so I can, a little pointy bit, so I can just make sure I'm bang in the middle of this. Uh, before I start taking my passes, okay? these pieces that we cut out with that giant cove bit um, and I cut them into six inch lengths which is the length of the 15 checkers, the height of 15 checkers and now I'm just planning out exactly what my layout looks like, checking everything that fits. I also, um, I also are on the drill press, just use that force a bit to drill out the middle of the dice cups and put a little round over on the bottom and then they can be sanded up. Um, so the width of, um, I've got these little end pieces. I'm going to need to cut a few more just little, little bits and pieces just to, um, this gets very fiddly at this point. But that's, that's the two dice cups plus the two checker trays. And then I've totally got space in the middle there for, my doubling cube. I said, I've just got space in the middle of my doubling cube. Um, so I just need to use a bit of random material and just uh, just make a little space for that in there, not very elaborate. Um, and then obviously when I get round to gluing these in, make sure that they line up perfectly in both halves so that when it folds over, it uh, holds everything nicely in place. Um, so I think at this stage, what I'm gonna do is 
Um, I am going to finish sanding the box itself. Um, I'm going to finish sanding my, uh, my cups and these pieces. And I think I'm going to put some finish on all of that um, so that it's sort of a bit, I can see where I'm up to and it's a bit clean and tidy. And once it's, I don't want to, uh, once that's done, I'll, um, I'll think about uh, cutting out the felt to, I'll get, get the felt in. I don't want to, I don't want to get the felt covered in wood chips and sand, sawdust. So I think if I finish it first, then I can do that in a cleaner space. Great. got to a scary bit which is where we've got to cut this surface to fit into uh, the frames. Uh, these are looking quite nice, they've got some finish on them uh, which dried overnight so this is all the first chance we get to actually look at what this thing's going to look like uh, with this frame. Um, so that's all looking pretty nice. Um, so what I'm going to do here is um, first I'm going to I'm going to cut this in half, obviously, um, but I'm not going to cut it to exactly to size. I'm going to cut it a little large so it fits inside the rabbit on the back of these, um, and then uh, I'm going to put it in and I'm going to loosely put the backs on to put some pressure, and then I'm going to adjust it to exactly where I want it. And then I'm going to run a knife around the inside edge of, uh, of the frame. So in theory, that will give me a cutout that's exactly fit to that frame. And then I'll label them up so I know which one's which. Um, and that should help us avoid uh, gaps around the edges or it not fitting. Um, I've, uh, I did it last time with a regular scalpel, like X-Acto knife. Um, which has got a beveled blade that's beveled on both sides. And because of that, and because of the, the size of the peak of the actual blade handle, you can't get exactly into the edge. And so I, I felt, discovered that I had given myself a kind of bevel all the way around um, because of the thickness of this felt material. So I then had to come off and very carefully trim off all of these little extra bits of felt, which was a little bit hair raising. So I, uh, got myself, uh, this is actually a marking knife, but it's a sort of single-sided marking knife. So it's got a, f a completely flat uh, surface on one side and only got a bevel on one side. So I'm, I'm hoping, that, I'm not hoping this is A, sharp enough. I'm gonna go sharpen it. Um, but I'm hoping this will allow me to cut exactly flush with the side, but we'll see how that goes. Okay, so we have the uh, playing surfaces nicely fitted into the box. Um, the reason I did this at this stage is because it requires me to be able to take the bottoms out. And uh, now that's the last process that needs the bottoms to come in and out. So I'm going to be able to go and um, finish up the box, do the hinges, uh, inlay some magnets so that it closes, um, screw in the bottom and glue in all the pieces from the tray and there probably is a way of making the, bo the bottom still removable after you glue in the pieces of the tray but that's going to be a pain and not necessary so now that I don't need to, the book once the bottoms go back in they don't need to come out so I can glue the tray pieces straight down 
uh, into the tray. Uh, I just labeled um, these in a co one corner of each um, and on here to make sure I put them back in the right place. Um, and uh, I think we're ready to go and finish up the box. Okay, um, I'm gonna, I've got the bottoms on the boxes and the next step is to get some hinges on it. Um, I decided to put the hinges, like they would go on the inside, but be very fine uh, with the width of the stock I've got. So I'm gonna put them on the back uh, like this. Um, I just made a little uh, little mortising jig with some exacto blades to align it. Um, so that, and that should let me route out the, the route out the hinge mortises. Um, and I'm gonna put them three inches in from the side. Let's make that two and a half inches. I think three inches is a bit, um, just I want the, 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 the barrel of the hinge is gonna protrude across the top. So where you put your checkers um, when they're on the bar uh, is obviously restricted by that. And I think uh, a little bit closer to the edge is gonna make it a bit more comfortable for playing. Should they be right at the edge or no? I think that looks good. Let's give that a go. Okay, that looks uh, pretty good. Uh, let's have a look at the engine. Oh, there's a little, a little bit there that I didn't get. Okay, so my uh, hinges are uh, working well and uh, looking pretty nice. Um, obviously I need something to keep, keep this closed uh, and I'm gonna use these little neodymium, whatever you call it, magnets uh, inlaid here and here. Um, probably two of these slightly bigger, these like three eighths of an inch ones might do the trick. I guess I'll put two in and see how secure it feels. Um, if you, if I, I, I did this little scalloped finger pull here on both sides so that then once you can pull it open, I suppose if you had a handle, you'd want to put the, the magnets right in the middle, but uh, yeah, I think, I think they're in there. Um, when you're doing with, working with these, they have a polarity, so it would be a massive pain in the ass to, uh, to, put two together and then discover, inlay them and then discover that they weren't repelling, not attracting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, pair them off. Just keep them away from everything because they just fly across the room because they're pretty strong. So there's two pairs of them. Um, and then I'm just gonna take a Sharpie and I'm gonna mark the outside of that pair and the outside of that pair and I also might scuff them a bit on some sandpaper. And then those will be the sides that go in the holes. Uh, and that'll make sure that the sides that face together, if I pair them up correctly, uh, attract.
Okay, so I've got all my bits ready for my side trays. I've got the uh, the coved out sections for the checkers. I've got a bunch of little dividers that are just going to hold up the ends. Um, and I just cut two spaces that are the width of the uh, of the dice cups to make sure that uh, I leave enough room for those. And also to make sure that these are exactly the same distance in on both sides so that when it comes together, they'll sandwich the checkers nicely. And I've also cut some very some little one eighth thick uh, pieces of walnut to go along the bottom of these trays because at these en at the ends you'll see uh, you'll see through to the bottom where the dice cup goes in, um, and I think it should look nice. So I'm going to glue it all in with. Um, I'm just going to trim down to make sure everything fits, and then because um, it's pretty hard to get any kind of clamping pressure on here, and it's not under a lot of stress, so I'm going to glue it all together with CA glue, um, which is what I did last time, and it worked uh, very nicely. Uh, I got the magnets in, they were a pain in the butt because I forgot that they're, they're metric sized and I uh, I only have imperial sized Forstner bits so I had to, so it was slightly too small so you might have seen me on the uh, video clamping them in to try and get them in so that was uh, annoying but they do seem to be in and working quite nicely. Okay. <laughs> That's all the woodworking parts done. Uh, no more woodworking to do. Uh, just the uh, to glue in these the inlays and uh, and obviously we don't like this, so we're going to put uh, some leather on the on the backs to make it pretty. Um, I guess moment of truth. Let's uh, let's just put the checkers in and check that everything closes up. Um, okay. Yeah, I, should have, I, didn't, I already should have checked the fit across the back here. Um, but uh, so there we are, that's, I guess, what, what is there? About an eighth of an inch of gap, which is probably about right. I mean, my, I always want to get it as tight as possible, but that's, uh, that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. Uh, Probably could fit two Dublin cubes in there if we wanted, or Dublin cube and four dice and a bit of slot. I mean, I think that's okay. It's not supposed to be exact. Also, one of the thing reasons I didn't want to ever, I'm always nervous of making this an exact fit, is because um, you're going to constantly be putting the Dublin cube back in there at the start of games, and so you don't want to like. I mean, you want it to be able to, be able to just sort of fit in pretty easily at the start of a game when it's back on 64. Um, okay, let's put those in there. These here. Okay, well that one looks very nice, but obviously it has to close as well, so that's just... I've uh, moved myself to a relatively dust-free environment and the next step is to glue in the playing surfaces. Um, so I trimmed these pretty accurately to size, so I'm going to trust that they're ready to go. Um, I labelled the corners so I know which way around they go. Um, I, uh, I don't want to use like a super heavy duty adhesive for this. Uh, in case something goes wrong or in case the playing surface gets damaged. Um, if I just use a regular uh, spray 
adhesive. Um, I should be able to peel them up pretty easily if I ever need to. Um, but, uh, and then they're not under a lot of pressure, under stress. So I think that, that that'll be plenty. And also gives me a little bit of leeway with repositioning if I get it wrong uh, when I put them in. Um, so I'm gonna go outside and spray these up one at a time and uh, and come, um, come back in and pop them in. Okay, so we've got the surfaces in. Um, uh, they fit nicely. Uh, they uh, they look good, I think. Um, and so that's everything on the inside of the board totally finished. Uh, the only thing left to do is to uh, do something about these plywood backs. And what I want to do is I want to put a leather piece on here. Uh, the last board I had some leftover leather from a couch that we were throwing away that I'd I'd uh, upcycled <laughs> and. Um, this time round, I, I haven't, I was throwing away an, an old uh, cowskin rug, um, which is a bit threadbare, but has some nice, uh, still has some nice uh, material on it. It does uh, shed a bit, which might be annoying to the friend I'm giving this to, but I, I think this will look cool. So I'm gonna try and get the leather pieces out of this. Um, it's nice if the leather, feels a little padded on the back and then it's also like, um, you know, it's, uh, it's something to cushion the board when it's resting on a table. Um, I think I could do that with just two layers of leather, possibly, for this, because I've only got a very small lip around the edge here. Um, or I could use, this is what I used last time, is I used an old yoga mat and I cut this to size first um, and then I applied the leather over the top of this and wrapped around the edges and then glued the whole thing down. And that gave it a nice kind of squishy feel as well. So I'm gonna, I'll experiment a bit. I'll either use two layers of the leather or um, with a little sort of folded over edge to tuck into the into the, the groove here, or I'll use a, a piece of the, the yoga mat and then stick it down first. Um, this needs something a bit more industrial strength to stick it down. I don't think the spray adhesive is going to get it done. So I'll probably use uh, contact cement, which is nasty, uh, but uh, really, really sticks to the yoga mat because it almost like melts the material into place. But if I, that's never going anywhere if we use contact cement. Okay, so I've got the uh, I've got the leather glued up onto the onto the old yoga mat. Um, this leather was thicker than I thought it was going to be, so it was actually a pain in the butt, and I've had to use some little uh, clips and some calls just to get like a nice tight like square edge on it and make sure that doesn't come up. Um, but that's nicely glued down. The other one's upstairs, ready to go onto the box. Um, so I need to glue those onto the box and the box will be finished. And the only other thing I need to do is um, the, the dice cups look great, but the insides are unfinished and also you don't want clicky clacky dice cups. So I've got some leather scraps that I'm just gonna use to line uh, the dice cups. This is actually the leather I used for the, um, the last board and it's just off, the, off an old sofa and it's got this seam on it um, which from when it was stitched together and I can use if I'm, I'm what I did last time it worked great is I use that seam to make a little triplet at the top of the cup so I'm going to try and do the same thing again. Is the finished article. Let's see if I can give you a little uh, look around 
and splines came out nicely. There's the little finger pull with the magnets on the inside. Um, the uh, leather came out okay. As I said, it was a bit thick, um, so I had to weight it down when I glued it on. Uh, but it seems to have held up. We'll see how long it holds up. Um, the hinges uh, did come out nicely and they work great, but it does mean that you can't uh, sit the, the board flat on its spine for storage because the barrel of the hinge pokes out. So that's a bit annoying. Um, you have to store it flat or, or on this end. Um, let's open it up and take a look inside. Um, so that uh, padded leather means it sits really nice and flush on the table. Um, let's see if I can get this down and have a look. So we've got the, uh, uh, the different checker trays at both ends. This one's all nicely full up. Um, and I'm gonna pull some of those checkers out and, uh, and get a game set up. Um, I really like how the, uh, how the color scheme turned out. The, 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 the blonde wood does work really nicely with this gray surface. Um, it means, it feels like my, the previous set was kind of a clubby feel. This one feels like a slightly more modern, scandy feel, I suppose. Um, I used walnut for the for the for the checker trays, um, which again goes quite nicely with the chestnut. Um, uh, which way am I going? Okay, so here we go, ready for a game. Um, I'll take the blue checkers. We've got the the little leather piece for my old sofa in the in the dice cup which gives us a little trip lip on the inside. Let's roll in this side so you can see it. Okay, so all plays very nicely indeed. Uh, white with a nice little uh, three two. Um, yeah. No, nope, very happy indeed. So um, I'm gonna give this to my buddy uh, for his birthday tomorrow. I hope he likes it. Thanks for watching. Um, and uh, yeah, any feedback, uh, let me know. My first ever woodworking video. Thanks very much. Yeah.